there's a way to approach these higher notes in pharyngeal that takes pressure off the voice. And it's easy to think, well, I took pressure off the voice, so that must be right. But here's the thing. If you, okay, so if you remember, you look at those three different registers. You have your chest register provides power, or provides presence and depth. Your pharyngeal provides power and punch. Your head voice provides release and ease. So what you're essentially describing is you're saying, well, I can approach, nay, 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 nay. I can approach that note in pharyngeal and head without chest. And what you get is punch, nay, there's a pop. And you get release and ease. There's no presence and depth to your tone though. Now we incorporate more of that chest voice um, and you get more presence and depth. You also feel a little bit more weight because there is more of your chest voice involved in your mix. It's not too much weight. It's just more weight. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Yeah. Um, so so it, suffice it to say this. If you incorporate more chest voice into your mix, there's going to be, it's going to feel like there's sort of an anvil, or like an anchor holding your voice down, mm -hmm. keeping it from floating away. The moment you sacrifice your, your chest resonance, you know, so if I go, nay, 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 I have this, yeah, boop, this is death. If I go, nay, 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 yeah, I have no chest presence there. Mm -hmm. So I've lost all presence and depth. It also feels a lot lighter, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you just pull back your volume though, and this is the point, this is really where it becomes helpful. You become comfortable with keeping that depth, keeping that release, keeping that brightness the whole time, regardless of anything else. You just want all three of those qualities all the time, so you get used to it. Even though it feels like it's more weight, and you go, "Has that right?" When you pull the volume back, first of all, do it full voice. Say, buh, 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 buh. Buh, 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 buh. "Now put just as much energy, but half as much volume." Buh, 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 buh. Buh, 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 buh. Nay, nay, nay. Now you have that depth on that high note, but there's a no pressure on your voice at all because you're simply not blowing a lot of air. Mm -hmm. So now you still have that. It's like a lot of tension. But good tension. Okay. So everything about this, this, the last 20 minutes has been about identifying the difference between good and bad tension. Remember what I was saying earlier that our brains are not good at distinguishing between good and bad tension or right and wrong, it's, it's familiar and unfamiliar. And so what your voice, your brain is telling you, you're engaging in tension and that's unfamiliar. We, everything tells us that that should be wrong. And yet the outcome of what you're getting is nothing but good things. And that should tell us that we're on the right track to understanding what good tension really is.